So we're here at the Lenara Connect here in San Francisco, and who are you? Hi, I'm Mark Rogotsky. I'm the director of the Lenaro Digital Home Group. Uh, we've had a great week here in San Francisco with all of our members, and um, just wanted to share with you some of the uh, latest things we're doing in the Lenaro Digital Home Group. There's a lot of uh, uh, activity and a lot of traction and a lot of uh, things happening at the Home Group, right? Yes. Uh, over the years, we've been working on a lot of core technologies, and now we're really seeing them get a lot of traction in both the open source community and in some of the uh, deployments that uh, people are doing using some of our technology. So in the Lenaro Digital Home Group, we've been focusing on secure media playback using OPT with DRM integrations. Is some of this stuff here, uh, exactly. it says here, play ready, DRM, uh, with OPT. Yes, so the commercial DRM integrations consist yeah. of both PlayReady and Widevine for Linux and for yeah. Android, AOSP. So we're covering all the bases. We have PlayReady integrations there and, uh, again, Widevine integrations as well. So if you can just check it out. So right now there's, a, there's, there's DRM support on this one. How is it supported? Yes. All right, so yeah. let me introduce Alexander Jutra, uh, the assignee from NXP. I should mention that NXP is the newest um, member to join uh, yeah. in our digital home group. So Alexander will, will uh, describe his demo that he has set up on the high key. Hey, you from NXP? Yeah, yeah, I'm an assignee for Linaro. So there's a whole bunch of stuff NXP is doing with the, with the home, home group. Uh, yeah. So for, for example, uh, here, what do you have here? Well, the demo is not quite set up yet, but um, I have uh, PlayReady integrated uh, on Android 8 um, with uh, Opti available. Um, and, uh, so it's running uh, right now on a, on a high-key development board uh, with all this stuff going on here. So um, uh, when you talk about and AOSP 8, uh, all this DRM stuff, Opti, uh, LHG is always the first one to get everything to work? It, well, in terms of integrating with OPT, um, a lot of uh, people notice that in the uh, industry, OPT is gaining more and more traction. So we've always been promoting OPT as an open source trusted execution environment. And then the additional DRM integrations we do are seen as something of very high value to our members. And uh, there it mentions AOSP uh, 8.0 right, and so, uh, yeah. there's uh, this right here there's uh, later I'm gonna check it out something to do with AOSP TV but what's the latest stuff that's going on with Android TV maybe that uh, that how, how do you help in with that kind of environment well right now we focus on core enablement on AOSP in terms of um, media features through the TV input framework for uh, like Linux DVB libraries, but again, the other component that we bring to the AOSP is the OPT uh, DRM integrations. And our members then are looking forward to uh, doing um, OPT integrations on their own Android TV deployments. And uh, so there's all this vi video for Linux too, there's uh, oh, that's, all the, the yeah. hardware acceleration work. Right, so on the Primarily on the Linux media framework side, in the last six, nine months, we've been really focusing on essentially making media run better on ARM. And that is looking at integrations of GStreamer with V4L2, as well as uh, some work that we've leveraged for FFmpeg for V4L2. And we can see that when we run our media pipelines with uh, V4L2, as well as Whale and Weston, DRM KMS on, for the graphics, we can see that we really offload all of the um, computation onto the uh, video codec as well as the GPU. And we see that the CPU utilization is actually very low and we achieve very high optimized performant media playback on Linux with V4L2 driver framework. And uh, for example, there was this conference at IBC recently, you were going over there, there's a lot of set-up box over there going on, and yep. what kind of uh, uh, things are you noticing in the, uh, the, the LHG is maybe a couple years old now? Well, no, and we're four, well, four. I just, I, yeah, I've just celebrated my fourth year, fourth year. working anniversary here. Fourth so, year. Yeah, we're into our fourth year. So I was at, just before, yeah. 
um, yeah. just before this conference, yeah. uh, I was at IBC in Amsterdam. Can you pause it? Pause it. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Done, done, done. Yeah, so the fourth year and then... Okay, so LHG is in its fourth year right now, and uh, I was at IBC, and it's, like I said, it's interesting that the technologies we're working on are getting to be more known in the industry. So for the set-up OEMs, the, um, the Opti integrations with uh, DRM are very important. Really, people are looking at being able to in interoperate with multiple DRMs, and they're looking for... Um, lessening the burden on integrations, and Opti provides that. And the other thing, of course, that's really big is ultra high def and high dynamic range, which incorporates many technologies. So, In what do you do with the ultra high def and the HDR? You well, had a presentation about this, right? Yes, I had, I had a presentation yeah. on this um, earlier in the week, and really it, it, was the, it was to provide an overview of what the technologies are, and also what the, um, you know, how they're currently supported in AOSP as well as Linux V4L2. So right now, uh, it's, it's an exciting new technology. We're looking at incredible color uh, reproduction playback on user devices with extended high dynamic range luminance as well as the wide color gamuts and really produce some stunning uh, playback on some of the newer monitors. Is HLG becoming kind of like a standard? Everybody is supporting that or there's also well, the Dolby the, Vision? It looks pretty good, right? I would say there's primarily three HDR systems that have been gaining traction. One of course is HDR10 which is the, um, the open standard and it uses something called a perception quantization curve developed by Dolby uh, for what they call an electrical optical transfer function. So HDR10 is something that is being supported by you know, almost universally because it is open source. Dolby Vision is proprietary, but it actually extends the high dynamic range to 12 bits with a 2-bit enhancement layer over HDR10. And uh, Dolby is um, able to provide a scalable solution where they can actually support SDR, standard dynamic range output, HDR10, as well as Dolby Vision. They had an impressive demo at the IBC, right? Yes, they, really what HDR is showing is that the content that is created and mastered is really what you can actually end up seeing on the screen. In the past, you, there would be so many transfer functions and sort of degradation of the content, and then the, the, um, the monitor at the end would only be able to capture a very limited range. Now with the newer monitors that support the UHD Alliance requirements, you can capture essentially the pretty close to the mastered content and preserve the artistic intent that was um, involved when they actually mastered the content. It's quite impressive. The other standard is HLG, which is hybrid log gamma. This is another um, electro-optical transfer function, and this is used primarily with live content. And really all this is doing is, is extending its, it's staying at a, like the um, power law that's used for t uh, the standard gamma-based uh, transfer functions, but then it extends it at the high end in order to support higher luminance. Do so, you do some work with that in, well, in, in, in an hour? We're not working with it right now, but it is one of the supported types in, um, in uh, you know, Android or AOSP at this time, and uh, we expect support for it to be added to V4L2 very soon. So we're looking at uh, you know, H UHD HDR technologies as being the next really, really big technology. So it's really quite stunning in terms of the quality of pictures that can be produced with 4K and UHD HDR. When when, uh, when all this uh, on the market is getting these amazing 4K HDR displays for $500 and less and stuff, and you need well, to connect awesome setup boxes. How about the UI? Is that in 4K too? And does that mean well, Linaro has even more work to make things smooth? Well, that's where you're looking at say, issues with GPUs where you want to be able to support, um, typically the, the video processor, the VPU path is where a lot of the HDR work is done. 
but then the GPU is responsible for then also supporting some you know, video textures as well as the graphics overlay at 4K resolution. So ultimately what we're looking at are better quality monitors supporting you know, this HDR content and then with you know, fantastic you know, 4K graphics as well. So some of the UIs that we've seen you know, that are being shown at, you know, at consumer trade shows uh, maybe in there a few years out before they'll be really, uh, you know, commonly uh, available on on uh, high-end TVs. These these user interfaces oh, and, look and awesome. guides are just incredible. They're, it's going to be like a, like they're, a, they're remarkable. Like entering a new world, yeah. kind of on your TV. You'll be like, oh, I want to get into this UI. It's so beautiful. Yeah, and and the other thing that's interesting is that we're seeing more voice activation. So, for example, as you know, with um, you know. Google, Amazon all have their home, like the Home Assistant and Alexa. We see that the trend will be that people will be, you know, in the next few years will be talking to either their smart TV or remote to change channels or do whatever. And how is Lenar involved in that kind of world? Well, I think at this point what we're looking at is really some of the, uh, we've, we've been talking with some of our members and looking at their, their initial concern right now is for voice activation to have very low latency so that when certain commands are uttered by the user that the the uh, the device or smart TV the set top or smart TV can react very quickly to these so you may be in kind of a low power mode and just listening for some key words once you hear those key words it, it will wake up and and you know, start doing whatever the user wants. So that's really one of the things that some of our, our members are saying. We want to be able to be, um, you know, be listening um, in low power mode. And then as soon as we hear these key words, we can, you know, fire up the system. Could it be that it has kind of like a connection with the lights group also now? There's all these well, set-top boxes want to have every, IoT everything, implemented, everything right? Everything's starting to converge, of course, in what they call the smart home or connected home. That terminology has been around for a while. But now with these voice activation uh, controls, it's the the uh, interface for the user is much more natural. And so not only will they probably be controlling like TV channels and things like that, they can make queries just as you do with uh, your Google Assistant, for example. And they can also, you know, it, it can easily be extended to like the smart home and, and control other you know, elements in your house. So they would there would need to be an involvement in what, what all the stuff that Light Group is doing and putting that into the set-top box. Well, I think... Maybe some of the lower, lower power chipsets. It could also be included on the SOC to have that kind well, of Well, yeah, but typically what happens is the set-top boxes in that are, are usually... They have very high-powered CPUs and GPUs in them, so to add IoT capabilities just for the home, it's, it's usually not... It's, 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 it's a relatively... Um, you know, if, if you're just controlling certain items, it, it's not a huge processing load to add some of that. And uh, can we look just uh, around a little bit more? So there's some stuff over here uh, that has to do with the RDK. Hey, is your, is your demos working? Set up? Yeah, we are trying to set yeah. up. Still, we don't have the okay. networking. Yeah, so this is uh, Shiva, who's working Hi. as an assignee from Comcast, and he'll talk to you about what he's uh, doing with his demo here. So what are you showing here? Yeah, so this is RDK ported on uh, Dragon Board 410C, uh, which is one of yeah. the 96 boards. So this uses uh, V4 L2 acceleration and uh, yeah. optimized DMA path. Yeah. So uh, the complete uh, 1080p video playback, uh, we are able to yeah. do less than 20% uh, CPU yeah. usage, which gives 80% of the CPU to for the MSOs to do uh, different load or different applications. So you have the, the full hardware acceleration, uh, accelerated video uh, and what is the A306 GPU? Yeah, yeah that is Adreno 3, 306 GPU. So yeah. Yeah, uh, that is used for graphics acceleration using MISA, uh, the latest MISA uh, driver. All right. So uh, so there's, uh, there's, there's Android stuff. There's uh, 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 what's it called? Uh, uh, RDK. What kind of platforms are being worked on? So for the RDK, we've been working on the Dragon Board to uh, start doing some prototyping of RDK with Video for Linux 2 driver framework. And as she was mentioning, on the, the Dragon Board 410C, uh, using the uh, 
video decoder as well as the GPU, we can achieve very uh, high performance playback. All right, so, should we check a little bit further yeah, over there? Yeah, so let's see, this is Kalyan. He is a also an assignee hey. for Comcast, and he's uh, actually done a nice uh, kind of proof of concept uh, work over the last six months, and um, I'll let him describe what he's done. So what are you showing here? Yeah, so um, the secure boot uh, implementation we are doing on uh, Hikey platform. On this one? Yeah. This is a Hikey boot. Yeah. And uh, we uh, implemented the reference solution, uh, secure boot and uh, DRI, disaster recovery image on uh, 96 board. Um, so that is the reference implementation. Um, so so um, you have, a, it says here, a chain of trust for authenticating uh, an OS loader. What is that? Yes. So uh, in the secure bootloader, uh, we are authenticating the Linux kernel and the root of us. So to authenticate those Linux kernel, uh, the key, public key, has to be placed in a different partition. For rootfs also, you have to place the key in a different partition. So uh, the image and the corresponding key will be in a uh, different location. That way, we are maintaining the chain of trust. All right. Yeah. Cool. Cool. And then there's uh, there's all this stuff that has to do also with the with the the Android TV world. Uh, we were talking about it a little bit before, but there's a lot of things happening there, right? Right. Again, some of the work that we're doing, we're looking to enable technologies that our members can then integrate into um, their solutions and some of those solutions um, some of our members are working with uh, Android TV as well. So in AOSP we're trying to provide improved enablement for some DVB libraries as well as these uh, security um, integrations with OPT. And that's something that our members see as valuable and want to incorporate into their, um, their final offerings. So there's going to be a lot more stuff to happen in the months to come at the yeah. home group, right? Yeah, there's in the year to yeah. come. There's again the when we when I go to shows now people instead of me always pitching to them OPT, now they're coming to me and saying we really want to talk to you about OPT and, and things like that because they're looking at having that um, that integration and having an open portable trusted execution environment that gives them commonality for all their DRM integration. So when they have to go from one DRM to another or work with another SOC vendor, they it helps them in all of their integrations because they're, they've got one element that's in common in a very important area. And yesterday there was a very interesting keynote about the project Treble, right? How yes. much is that going to happen here with, well, the, with the home group? Well, yeah, that that's an effort that's going on within Lenaro, and the home group is really kind of a consumer of what is being done there. We look to, at one point, support things like the Android Common Kernel. Um, again, these are provided to us, and our SOC vendors now for um, Android O are now responsible for these supporting these vendor test suites and uh, implementing what's been done in Treble. So this this in the kernel space, this is a very big area, but LHG is really using the um, output from other uh, groups within Lenaro. I can imagine that uh, that uh, the, what's it called? I can imagine that uh, w once, it would be awesome if the set-top box that gets Android 8 just get automatically updated forever, kind of, well, with Treble. Yeah, Treble was introduced to make a clean, cleaner delineation between the, um, you know, the SOC components and to, one of the goals was to enable security updates to be done much more quickly. So again, there, there's other kernel folks here in Lenaro who are uh, you know, more deeply involved with this than, than we are. We're, we're using the output that they provide. There's, and there's even more demos, or this, 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 for now, this, there's yeah. a, that, yeah, that's this it for is now. it. All right, yeah. cool.